It's kind of like what happens when you see animals at the zoo and you give them a reflection. Some animals will look in a mirror and they'll recognize, oh, this is just a reflection of myself. But a lot of animals will see a mirror and see that reflection in the mirror and will mistake it for another intelligence. And I wonder if some of that is what's happening with some of us too. Hey guys, it's Logan. Um, you might have seen one of my recent videos where I talk about how you can compare ChatGPT to kind of like a giant Plinko game. As I was thinking more about this with some of the news coming out with Microsoft and their new Bing search implementation, a couple of thoughts came to mind that I thought might be helpful to share with everybody. There's an aspect to all of these new tools that kind of gives off an illusion that they do more than what they actually do. And so it's easy for a lot of people to see these tools and say, wow, look at how far artificial intelligence has come and how much intelligence these systems have. Where in reality, these systems, <laughs> if you ask me personally, I don't actually know if I would say whether these systems truly are intelligent. And I want to kind of help you understand why. So let's quickly think about how these systems actually work. When you hear about these systems, you'll hear about how they have trainable parameters. So ChatGPT has 175 billion trainable parameters. Those are the posts in its Plinko game. It has 175 billion different posts in its Plinko game. So every time there's a new sentence that it has to figure out what words to go to respond to that sentence with, it can bounce around 175 different posts to find the next right word. So the process of training for these systems goes through essentially all of the internet looks at all the different kinds of words that are connected to each other and related to each other in certain ways. And then it starts to figure out the rules of how to configure those posts so that it will, it will correctly be able to bounce the, down the Plinko board until it lands on a word that will have a high probability of being the next right word in the sequence. So that's what the training process is doing. So when you ask ChatGPT a question or when you ask Bing search a question, it has no idea what it is that it's doing. It's just performing a computation by following rules that were discovered by analyzing human language and some fine tuning with human feedback. But all that human feedback does is fine tune the rules, how those posts in the Plinko game are set up so that the responses that come out at the bottom are acceptable. So the system has no idea what it is that it's doing. And this creates a kind of problem with large language models, as we're seeing with Bing and ChatGPT, that they can so confidently <laughs> produce wrong answers. Because think about it, it's a giant Plinko game. <laughs> it's not trying to figure out what the answer is. It's just trying to figure out which words are, have the highest probability of coming next. So built into the system, is no, it has no capacity to be trying to get to a source of truth. All it's trying to do is, is guess a high probabilities. And so that's why you have all these problems with Bing or ChatGPT giving answers to things like the example of the Google ad where it's providing answers to questions that are made up that are completely fabricated and that hopefully you can understand how that's built into the system and so it's kind of a weird situation that we're in where we have you could kind of see in the microsoft event we have marshaled the full strength of our scientists researchers ethicists engineers and legal and policy experts to develop approaches to risk mitigation strategies giving this sort of this impression that it's like these systems are kind of these wild, uncontrollable animals. And they're sort of talking about if we can keep these in a tight enough box, maybe we can get these, these crazy animals that just want to say whatever they want to say uh, to be productive <laughs> more often than they're not. Yeah, it's freaky looking, okay? That's what it is. You cannot. What it is. Which is a weird strategy. It's a weird approach to think that this is what we're going to try to do with artificial intelligence. It's create a system that will say anything <laughs> then just hopefully put enough boundaries around it <laughs> that the crazy outputs that it gives are more useful than they are not. <laughs> so it's just a weird situation that we happen to be in. They're not intelligent. They are calculating patterns that can appear to be intelligent because they are simply reflections of the intelligence that made them human intelligence. 
And so you want to be careful with how much intelligence or authority that you give to a reflection. And I wonder if we're doing a little bit of that now. It's kind of like what happens when you see animals at the zoo and you give them a reflection. Some animals will look in a mirror and they'll recognize, oh, this is just a reflection of myself. But a lot of animals will see a mirror and see that reflection in the mirror and will mistake it for another intelligence. And I wonder if some of that is what's happening with some of us too. So there's certainly a lot to think about as we continue to watch the uh, unfolding of artificial intelligence. We're not there yet. There's a lot more that we need to do in order to build truly intelligent systems. But it has been fascinating and really interesting to see the effects that some of these early, early versions are having in our worldwide community. So I guess let's just keep, uh, keep watching and see what happens. Okay, so that's all for now. Hopefully uh, there's some interesting thoughts for us all to think about. If you are interested in these kinds of topics, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in one of the next videos.